The wind is up today and it's my very first day sailing. Actually, I can't sail, but I do know how to steer. So Dan's put me at the helm. We're on our way to Butterfly Bay and we're actually making really good time because we're doing seven and a half knots with the wind behind us, only one sail out and the head still just got deflated. Maxine, go starboard. Put some wind in that sail. It's not easy. It's like the road's moving underneath you. You have to take account of the wind and the current and constantly make adjustments. How's your first sail, honey? Oh, a bit scratchy. I had only a couple of sailing lessons, so I've got a really steep learning curve. I don't even know what everything's called. Talk about a fish out of water. There's so many things to worry about. I look down and I go off course, I look up and I go off course, and look down there and, uh, uh, what you would call it, I go off course. It takes a lot of concentration when you're not used to it. There's so much to learn. I just hope Dan has the patience to teach me. Then we just got hit by some really fierce wind, and that was scary. And everything started to blow away. We just got hit by a bullet, which sent the boat sideways. Really scary. Which was scary for her, because she hadn't been hit by bullets before. Bullets are these nasty little wind funnels that come up over the mountain and come down and slam the boat. The wind accelerates, spins the boat around, rips your hats off, takes towels off, throws them in the water. The bullets are scary. It's really funny because I have to sail into the sun and I hate the sun. <laughs> so, like, oh my god, I hate the sun. You don't like wind much either. No. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> this is crazy. Well, we got here. We're um, at Butterfly Bay on a mooring, and the wind's blowing about 30 knots, and the bullets are coming off the mountaintops and whacking into the boat. And the reason my hair looks like I just stepped out of a Duran Duran video is <laughs> my hat blew off. So I've lost a pair of sunglasses, some clips, and a hat. Whoa! And there goes the thing. We got to tighten these up. You can hear it howling. Despite being bombarded by bullets, Dan really wants to find his hat. So we mount a search mission in the dinghy. It's not so much that the hats are of any value, but they're really bad for the reef. They sink down to the bottom and eventually uh, smother the reef. So I was just trying to retrieve my hat. I thought if I could see it, I could go get my snorkel gear and come back. You know what? What? That's a really bad hat you're wearing. I love my hat. I don't understand why Maxine doesn't like it. Butterfly Bay has a lovely sheltered stretch of sand. And yes, it really does have butterflies. Dan's hat is gonzo, but I've heard of something that can help him make amends for trashing the reef. It's a beautiful morning, and Maxine and I are taking a little walk. So, where are we going today? You got a surprise for me, huh? Yeah, well, I thought you needed to learn a lesson. You needed a little something to help you remember not to let things go overboard. So, I found a group of volunteers who clean up the beaches. They're called Eco Barge Cleanup. And you are going to pick up rubbish today. We're going down south to a beach on the barge. And we're gonna pick up lots of plastic, apparently. The eco barge was set up by Libby Edge. Libby was so devastated by the effects of plastic and other rubbish in the Whit Sundays that she decided to do something about it. And what's at the core of eco barge is to protect our marine life, but ultimately our turtles. Our islands jut out from the coast. The plastic gets trapped into these southeast facing bays, and that's why we're so inundated with plastic here. Hey, are you ready to hey. pick up some garbage? Sure am. It's going to be interesting to see what's here, because it looks pretty clean from here. But once you start digging around, there's no end of stuff trapped in the rocks. And bushes. 
make lots of noise, the snakes hopefully disappear. And buried in the sand. So much of this rubbish is really embedded. If it floats, it's on the beach. Hi, guys. You Hi. found a lot of garbage. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Somebody's a fishing rod. Not that I can do anything with it, because I haven't caught a fish since I got here. Oh, look at this. Somebody's doormat. Really, 60 to 80% is coming from our stormwater drains. So what's in your backyard? What's on the side of the roads? Next time it washes out, it goes out to sea. It's not even noon, and this is the pile of garbage we've already collected. You just find tiny little bits of plastic like that. That could cause so much damage for a turtle or a bird. What did you find, Liv? Uh, I found a, a dead backbone of a green sea turtle. Here's just the linkage of why we need to remove marine debris from our marine environment. It only takes one piece of plastic to kill a turtle, so each piece we take out of the envi marine environment, we're doing our job. So what happens when a turtle ingests plastic? He swallows this plastic, it goes into his stomach. Then what he does is then goes forage around for his natural food source, so seagrass, fish, it goes in. What happened is this plastic has now stopped the flow. He can't pass this plastic, so his normal food source floats up because it's fermenting inside his tummy. Because the turtle is all bloated with fermenting gases, he can no longer dive underwater, so he floats around on the surface unable to forage for food. But he's starving the longest, slowest death. And it's that I can't handle. For Libby, the only answer is direct action. So we remove the plastic, and then we're also looking after the individual turtles as well. So it's a beautiful whole project where the community's involved. Almost there. Almost there, Dan. I am never going to let something fall off the boat again. I think we easily got 400 here today. They got 400 on that stretch just a month ago. So that's 800 kilograms on one beach. That's massive when you start thinking about that. In the past five years, Libby and her team have picked up hundreds of tons of plastic. This cleanup will have to be ongoing forever, but if we can just do prevention, someone's got to come up with a wonderful idea to prevent it. And, and really that's education, isn't it? So education's key. Next. I really want to go on the water. Despite the sharks. Hammerheads, huh? Maxine takes a risky plunge. She's a bit of an ostrich with her head in the sand. I mean, she says, I'm an optimist, but it's like, no, you're just not looking at the bad things that can happen. 